I'm Mr. B, and today we are going to go over a pretty interesting topic, uh, AC compressor clutch diagnostics. So, um, I know the AC compressor clutch nowadays is just about as expensive as a whole compressor with a clutch, so most of the times we just replace the entire compressor. But if you have minor problems with the compressor clutch, you can adjust the compressor clutch out, and I'm going to show you how to do that using shims. Also, we're going to look at a failed compressor clutch, and I'll show you kind of what happened, what went wrong, and we'll delve into the diagnostics and how to check a compressor clutch for wear and adjustment. All right, so here I have two compressors on this table. One has a clutch that has failed, okay? And it came in, it had a noise at the compressor, and it was also accompanied with, of course, AC blowing hot. So as you see this compressor here, it had a rubber center and that rubber center has disintegrated. Now why does a compressor have a rubber center? The reason why is so when this thing clicks together, it takes a little bit of shock out of the compressor and it doesn't contribute to noise, vibration, or harshness. It also adds a little bit of life to the compressor. So this is obviously a failed clutch. We would have to go ahead and replace this entire clutch, but most of the time we're just going to go ahead and replace the entire compressor, right? Because it's not much more expensive or maybe even cheaper to get a compressor with a clutch on it versus just getting a clutch. Okay, so on this one, you would also spin this bolt in the middle, see, and make sure that the compressor is not locked up. Sometimes when these compressors lock up, these will break loose and allow the compressor to freewheel. So we need to make sure that the compressor itself isn't locked up. So before you start any diagnosis to the compressor clutch itself, you need to make sure the compressor spins freely in the center, either by turning the bolt or turning the hub itself. All right, so moving over to our compressor, and this is how I'm going to show you how to adjust and check this compressor. I've got this center bolt already just hand tight. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a feeler gauge here and we are going to check what I call the air gap and what the manufacturer calls the air gap. So the air gap should be, there should be a specification on the air gap somewhere in shop key or your factory manual or something like that. And the, the gap, excuse me, the gap in between the compressor is checked with feeler gauges. Okay, so just like we're checking valve clearance or anything else, in between the outside clutch right here and the freewheeling uh, belt pulley, we need to check and this is going to correspond with a distance for a feeler gauge. So we're going to match that up with the specification. So if the specification is too loose or too tight, there are possibilities that we can adjust this. So how we adjust this is we take off the center bolt. This is a Torx head 30. I believe this is a Chevrolet compressor. The other compressor was off of a Dodge 4.7. And we are going to take the front clutch plate. Now this is going to bolt directly to the center shaft on the compressor, okay? So we take the bolts out. We're going to pull this out. Sometimes it's a little difficult. You may need to use some oil, penetrating oil or something like that to take this off. And this is your, your clutch material here. And this is basically almost like the flywheel would be on a clutch and flywheel setup. So this will snap together electromagnetically through the clutch coil and lock the center to this piece right here. And that's what turns your compressor on and off. So we pull this off and there is an adjustment shim in here, okay? So this adjustment shim is measured to be the right thickness to keep this plate just far enough off of this hub to where the uh, distance is within specification between these two parts, okay? So if my distance is too far away, this can give me a, a chatter or a compressor that, that makes noise, it might be noisy or it may not engage at all. So what we would do is we would take this off. Sometimes there's 
three, four, five of these. Actually, there's two. They just came apart here. Um, so if my clutch gap was too far apart, I would take one of these, put one back on, retorque everything, and check my gap again. If they happen to be too, if it was too tight, in other words, maybe the compressor was staying engaged when it was turned off, then I would add these, okay? And you can get these online, these, these little washers, or I'd maybe make something to go in there to pull this plate up a little bit further, okay? So those are two ways that you can uh, adjust the clutch gap to where it's gonna give you either more or less clearance and may save your customer or yourself some money and a lot of times this can be done on the car as well so you don't have to take the compressor off the car uh, if it's if you're able to get to this bolt and can get this off then that's going to be the easiest way to adjust your air gap for your clutch okay now if you have a bad bearing in this pulley you take these snap rings off here and you can replace the bearing sometimes as well we normally don't get into that. Normally, if it's if if the bearing's bad in this, it may uh, cause some leakage in the front seal as well. So we just normally go ahead and replace the whole compressor there. But you can adjust air gap. I do recommend. You know, it can save the customer some money. It can save you some money, and it's going to to add some extra labor into your paycheck every week if you're able to do this. But this is this is you know certain cases only. Again, if you have a situation like this where obviously, you know, that's not going to work, then, you know, by all means, go ahead and replace the compressor. Okay, everybody, that's about it for today for clutch diagnostics. Again, it's very easy for uh, anybody to do as long as you have that clutch gap specification and a set of proper feeler gauges to do that adjustment with. Um, if you have any questions, though, please leave them in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, like uh, this video and subscribe if you want to see more content. This is what helps me uh, build more content and makes it worth doing this. So hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you're able to take this into the field and uh, apply this to what you do and possibly save you or, or your customers some money. And we'll see you next time.